In this video, we're gonna look at a quantitative reasoning or quantitative literacy example that you could possibly run across in your quantitative literacy course. If you have a real world applications module, a problem solving module, even though you might not have an example identical to this, I'm going to show you two techniques to solve a lot of these types of problems that ask for how much, how many. And again, I'm gonna show you two ways. The first way, is just knowing when to multiply versus when to divide. And I will break that down for you. But oftentimes students get confused on knowing when to multiply versus when to divide. So I'm going to show you a technique called dimensional analysis. It's one of my favorite things to teach, especially for problems where it's asking for how many, how much, keyword how. So pause the video, read over this problem, and once you have read it, you'll realize the key things here are we need six almond cakes. The recipe calls for one and three-fourths cups of almonds per cake. We don't have any measuring cups though, but we do have a scale that measures things in pounds, and we want to figure out how many pounds of almonds will we need. Now again, I'm gonna show you two techniques. The first technique is just knowing when to multiply versus when to divide. This can be confusing. I will try my best to explain that, and then we'll come back and look at a more organized approach, dimensional analysis. So when I see this problem, if I was working it out by myself, I would not do dimensional analysis. I'm gonna show you how I would do it if I was by myself first. We need six cakes and each cake needs one and three fourths cups of almonds. One and three fourths is 1.75. If you think about three fourths, three divided by four is 0.75. So one and three fourths is 1.75. I would take that 1.75 cups and I would multiply it by six because this is the number of cups per cake and we need six cakes. So multiplying by six, we need 10 and a half cups. Now we don't have measuring cups, unfortunately, but I would come down here to this serving size on this nutrition label and each serving size is a fourth of a cup and that weighs 35 grams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 10 and a half cups that we need for all of our cakes. I'm going to divide it by 1 fourth, which is 0.25. One divided by four is 0.25. And when we divide that, we get 42. That means we need 42 of the servings. We need 42 of these 1 fourth cups. We need 42 times 35 grams. So that's what I'm gonna do. 42 times 35 grams, that's 1,470 grams. But we need pounds. So here's what I would do. I know that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds, but bear in mind, this is grams. 1,000 grams gives you one kilogram. If we take this 1,470 grams and we divide that by 1,000, we are essentially converting those 1,470 grams to kilograms, which is 1.47 kilograms. Now the other conversion, 2.2 pounds equals one kilogram. Well, we have almost one and a half kilograms. But this last step here to figure out pounds, if you have kilograms, multiply your kilograms by 2.2. And again, that's because 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. Let's press equals and here is our answer. Round to the nearest tenth. So our answer is 3.2 pounds. And all I did was crunch numbers on the calculator and I get it. You were probably like, Man, I'm not gonna remember when to multiply by this and divide by this, and I get it. So let me show you a more organized approach, and we're going to get this exact same answer, but we don't have to stress about knowing when to multiply versus when to divide. And this technique, dimensional analysis, it revolves around, first of all, understanding what our goal is, and our goal is pounds. So in my dimensional analysis, I'm going to put pounds at the top of my first fraction because that's my goal. I'm trying to figure out pounds. Now, if we read through this whole problem and if we look on this nutrition label, nothing mentions pounds. The only thing that mentions weight up here is grams. Well, I'm gonna use a conversion here, 2.2 pounds is one kilogram, right? 2.2 pounds is one kilogram, but this is grams. So there's two things we can do here. 
we can go ahead and do another conversion. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And look at what's happening here. This is important. I'm getting rid of those kilograms. I'm canceling out words that I don't want. We started off with pounds. That is what we're trying to find. So pounds goes at the top. 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. We don't want kilograms. We want grams so that we can bring in this 35. So I wrote down the conversion. Now, some of you may have just said, well, why couldn't we put 1000 grams right here? And you can because that's equal to one kilogram. But I'm showing the conversions step by step. We converted to grams and now we want to get rid of grams just like we got rid of kilograms. We did this so that we can bring in the 35 grams and these 35 grams is equal to one fourth cup of almonds. Now earlier I did mention one fourth of a cup is 0.25 cups. We can get rid of our word gram. Now we need to get rid of the word cup. Well recall one and three fourths cups. Do you remember that decimal? 1.75 cups. Notice where I'm putting the cups at. I'm putting it at the top, 1.75 cups. What does that do? That will make one cake. That is what the recipe calls for. 1.75 cups of almonds per cake. That means one cake. Our cups cancel out. We're getting rid of words. We still have pounds back here. We want to keep pounds. We've gotten rid of all these words, but we need to get rid of one more word. This is per one cake and we need to make six of these cakes. So I'm gonna put six cakes up top. We can put this over one. This is the one big old batch of cakes we're making. It's more of a placeholder right there. The cakes cancel out. Our dimensional analysis is done. And essentially we have all these numbers that I mentioned a few minutes ago when I was doing all that calculating over here, but now these numbers are in the correct spot for us to multiply and divide. And here's how we can do this very quickly. We can skip any of these ones that we see here and we can multiply all of our top numbers. So I'm gonna take 2.2 times 35 times 1.75 times six. Now what I did there is I multiplied all of the top numbers. Now you can press equals if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm going to immediately start dividing by all of my bottom numbers. So divide, I see a 1000. I'm gonna type that in. I'm gonna press divide again and I'm gonna type in 0.25. And yes, I am dividing multiple times and it just depends on how many numbers we have at the bottom. And what I want you to realize is I'm truly only pressing equals one time after multiplying all of the top numbers, dividing by those bottom numbers, and does that look familiar? Exact, exact same answer. And I don't even really need to come over here and write it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. 3.2 pounds is what that calculation was equal to if we round it to the nearest tenth. Same thing as what I did up here, and I've showed you two techniques. Again, that first one, crazy probably, knowing when to multiply versus when to divide. Yes, you need to know conversions, no doubt about it. You've probably done a module in your quantitative literacy course on conversions. We're applying those here. And yeah, I guess you could say this is applicable to the real world, especially for bakery shops where they make things in bulk. Now they're not gonna be sitting there doing dimensional analysis or probably not even multiplying. They already just know how much to use, but regardless, real world application, quantitative literacy, two techniques. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.